Okay, so in this problem, the area of the small triangle is 42 centimeters squared. Um, we are trying to find x and y. Now, x and y, x and y are distances, right? And distances are one dimensional, okay? Area is a two dimensional concept, okay? So if I'm going to find x and y distances using ultimately a ratio, okay, or a scale factor, however you want to view it, I need to use a scale factor that is relating first dimensional ideas, okay? Um, the reason I say that is because the information that you're provided here, the area of the small triangle is 42, but the area of the large one, you don't, you're not explicitly provided, but they imply what the area should be with those numbers right there, don't they? And the fact that's a right triangle. Can I go one half of 36 times 42? And that ends up being 756. 756. Okay. Can you compare those two areas? Can I say the area of the big figure? Uh, actually, let's do this with area of the small compared to area of the big. And it doesn't matter that ratio. Small over big or big over small doesn't matter. Uh, but the area would be 42 over 756, right? Now, area is a two-dimensional concept, right? So you got a two-dimensional thing divided by a two-dimensional thing. So yesterday we were calling that an A squared over B squared, weren't we? Okay, that is A squared over B squared. If I want to find a X and a Y, linear distances, one-dimensional distances, the ratio that I need to do that is A over B. Does that make sense, everybody? Well, if I'm trying to find A over B, and I have A squared over B squared, shouldn't I just be able to take square root of that thing? And that gives me A over B? Okay, so uh, it makes sense, I think, to reduce before we do that. This becomes um, 1 over 18. Okay, so that number right there, that divides the 1 over 18. That ends up being A squared over B squared. It's a better, you know, those numbers are a lot easier to work with than 42 and 756, right? So that's the benefit of reducing. Uh, now, if I square root that, it's going to give me A over B, right? So I need to square root this. So a square root of 1 is just 1. And the square root of 18, isn't 18 the same thing as radical 9 times radical 2? So that denominator becomes 3 radical 2. There's your A over B. That's your scale factor to compare distances. Okay. This here, this, uh, you know, when A squared over B squared is equal to 42 over 756 or 1 over 18, that is also a scale factor, but that only allows you to compare areas. Does that make sense, everybody? So you got to know which one to use. Okay. By them providing you one of them, they implicitly provide you both. You just got to do a little bit of work to find the one they don't give you. Okay. So A over B is 1 over 3 radical 2. Okay. Now, 3 radical 2, I'm just going to uh, see what this is as a decimal real quick. You don't have to do this, but it's 4.2. Okay. Basically meaning that this dimension here is 4.2 times as big as that one. Does that make sense? And the same thing for that 42. It's 4.2 times bigger than this one. Okay. Um, so that tells me why I should probably be something close to 10. Uh, but we'll go through the work and, and do this. Um, all right. So what should, if I'm trying to find X by setting up a proportion, because these things are similar, so that should relate to that, right? Corresponding sides should be in proportion to one another. So X should be relatable to 36. And they should be relatable to one another in that ratio. 
1 over 3 radical 2. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, we've done problems like Once we get this, we've done problems like this back in Chapter 7. Okay. Um, so when I cross multiply, I get 36 is equal to 3 radical 2 times x. Now, 3 radical 2 is my coefficient for x, right? So divide both sides by that. And that's what x should be. But do I like that radical 2 in the bottom? You multiply by radical 2 or radical 2. So it's going to be 36 radical 2 all over. What's 3 times radical 2 times radical 2? That gives me square root of 4, right? Yeah. What's square root of 4 equivalent to? 2. So what's 3 times 2? 6. So what's 36 divided by 6 then? 6. So 6 radical 2, that's my x value. Okay, 6 radical 2. Okay, and let's, let's see if that kind of pans out. Does that make sense? If, if 6 radical 2 compares to 36... Okay, they reduce to radical 2 over um, 6, right? Now, you might not see that this is radical 2 over 6, but if I flip that, rationalize it, does that give me 3 radical 2 over 1? So they are the same thing. It's just that uh, now I've got reciprocal format, but... Uh, that is my value for x. If you were to uh, maybe grab a, a calculator, okay, and just type in, um, you know, 6 radical 2 divided by 36, or 36 divided by 6 radical 2, hit enter, and then type in either this or its reciprocal, hit, hit enter, you should get the same decimals back, okay? Um, and it's kind of a way you could check yourself. Now, in the event I'm trying to find y, finding y is the exact same work. What's y going to compare to? 42. And it should compare in the fashion of 1 to 3 radical 2. So we get 3 radical 2y is equal to 42. Divide both sides by 3 radical 2. Rationalize. We get 42 radical 2 over... Again, we've already done that work. That's 6, right? So what's that reduced to? It's going to be 7 radical 2, right? Okay. And, and just to convince you, maybe, maybe I will just grab Desmos here real quick to show you that the algebra doesn't make sense. All right, so if I take... Uh, 1 divided by 3 square root of 2 gives me that decimal right there, right? Okay. Now if I take 6 square root of 2 and divide that by 36, does it give me the same decimal? Okay, and that's how they should relate. They should be um, in proportion to one another by that scale factor of 1 over 3 radical 2. Uh, same thing should happen when I take 7 uh, square root of 2. And I said it should be close to 10. Is that pretty close to 10? And if I divide that by 42, does it give me the same decimal that 1 over 3 radical 2 gave me? Okay. Uh, so that's kind of the check that you could use uh, to help out with that. Okay. I think that's a very, 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 very good question for you to kind of conduct and do over again. Keep doing it over and over again several times. Uh, so that you get proficient at it, because you will see that on your test. Okay, um, you've got two videos now of this. You've got the one we did yesterday in class. Now I, didn't, I know we didn't solve y yesterday in class; we just did x. Um, but you can you can look at this one as well. Now I also did this yesterday, and kind of show you that it doesn't matter the approach you use here. Once I know x, could I say area for that triangle on the left is one half b times h? Do you know that the area was 42? Okay. We got one half. Now, I'm looking for y. Y is my b. I don't know what that is, but I know x is 6 radical 2, isn't it? 
What's half of 6? So I get 3 radical 2 times y is equal to 42. Can I divide both sides by 3 radical 2? And if I rationalize that, it still gives me 7 radical 2, right? Okay. So you've got multiple ways. If you don't like using the proportion concept to find y, you can use the area formula to help you find y once you know what x is. Okay. Uh, you can't do this, though, if you don't know x or y. You need to be in the h or one of the two to solve for the other. Okay. And that's something that I think people kind of lose sight of. This is a formula. Okay, and it's isolated for area, but I could do this, A divided by H uh, divided by B is equal to a half, something like that. I can, I can go through um, and, and basically solve for any component of this formula that I wanted to. Now, I don't know why you would solve for one half. Uh, maybe I solve for just B, so I put a 2 over here. Okay, if I know the area, I know the height, and I know the base, okay, if I do this algebra with it, um, sorry, but the area, the height, um, I can go through this procedure and find my base. Does that make sense? So when you when you have formulas, guys, that have you know two, three, four, five variables in them, you can actually solve for any one of those variables, um, and and that is often something people lose sight of. Why is it solved as area equals one half bh? Because area is the thing that we're most interested in most of the time, right? Uh, if we were trying to find h most of the time. That formula would probably be set up as, you know, 2a over uh, over b, okay? and that would give you h all the time. Uh, so those are just things, the little things to think about. Um, does that help with that question? Yeah. All right. Uh, are there any others on there that you guys were concerned about, struggle with, confused? I think if you can get that one, you you could probably get them all, right? Okay. Yeah, that's that's uh, the most involved uh, of those. Always remember, uh, and you saw this as we go through, sometimes they're asking you for scale factors, and that's linear. Sometimes they ask you for area ratios, and those are two-dimensional, okay, or should be squared, all right? Mm -hmm. No? All right, so in this one, they tell me the area of the larger one is 165. Okay. So area here is 165. Uh, the area of this one is ultimately what I'm looking for. That's the unknown. Okay. Uh, as I look at this, if I'm going to try to find an area, and I'm using similarity to do that, I need to use that area. Okay. So I'm going to have to use the a squared over b squared concept. Does that make sense? Okay. Now, in order to do that, I need to know what um, a over b is. Does that make sense to everybody? Because once I know a over b, I can get a squared over b squared. The reason I don't know that one right now is because this, this here is unknown. So I'd have, you know, 165 over a question mark. Make sense? Okay, so I need to basically use similarity and proportions to figure out what this question mark should be, and the way I can do that is look at A over B. Remember, those are your distances. Those are the one-dimensional things, okay? If I look at A over B here, is it 28 over 20? Does that make sense? Remember, A over B is a scale factor. So what is 28 divided by 20? What's that going to reduce to? What number goes into both those evenly? Is it 7 fifths? Okay. So if A over B is 7 fifths, that implies that A squared over B squared should equal what? 
49 25 that then is the ratio that you're going to use to help find what that question mark is and you're going to say 49 over 25 equates to okay 165 over x okay because what this means this 49 over 25 what that means is if i take 49 of these triangles 49 of those things and just put them kind of like side by side with one another and maybe paint them that area would equate to 25 of those does that make sense okay so we're trying to equate these things so i know that 49 is coming from um that four, I guess the 49 is a scale factor that actually originates from this. Okay, it originates from that, that triangle because the 7 came from the large triangle, right? So when I square that, the 7 comes, or the, the 7 squared comes from the large triangle. So that's why I know this 175 should be in the numerator because those two things should be components from the same triangle. And these things should be components from the same triangle. So now when I cross multiply, I get 49x is equal to 25 times 165. Can I take that? Whatever that equates to. Divided by 49. I don't know what they, I think they ask you to round to a certain whole number or something like that to get your area. Does that help? Any other questions? All right. Let's, uh, if there's no other questions,